Hi everyone, Jeff here for VIP Vision. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to locate an event on a VIP Vision Network video recorder, clip it out, and then back it up to a USB stick. So the first thing that obviously we're going to need in this case is a USB stick with some free space. We're then going to need to insert that into our VIP Vision Network video recorder. Now in this case, I'm going to be showing you on a professional series recorder. This is actually a four channel and the one that I'll show you actually back in a clip up on is an eight channel. But any USB port, any free USB port on a VIP Vision recorder can be used. So in this case, I could be inserting it into the front port, like so. Or if for some reason I've got that in use, let's say for instance I had a mouse plugged in here, I could instead use the rear port. like so. Now, keep in mind that your recorder may have more USB ports than this. As I said before, this is just a four channel professional series recorder. So the next thing that we need to do after we've plugged our USB stick in is I'll just jump across to our eight channel recorder now. So when you plug the recorder in, the first thing that you'll notice, or the, the USB stick into the recorder, I should say, the first thing you'll notice is it'll pop up with a, a menu, something like this saying, find USB device, and it'll just tell you that you've just plugged something in It'll say that you've got X amount of free space on it and it'll ask you what you want to do. So in this case, um, I don't want to do any of these things. File backup, log backup, config backup, system upgrade. So file backup we would use if we were going to uh, back up a big chunk of footage, which we're not going to do in this video. Uh, log backup, obviously we're backing up logs. Config if we want to save everything on the recorder. Um, and then system upgrade if we were upgrading firmware. So in this case, I'm just going to right click. So right click once and it's going to bring me back to my camera. Now, the clip that I'm looking for is when this little Seagate Skyhawk up here somehow ended up on top of the Rhino. So I'm fairly sure that that's happened sometime today since I saw it before. So what I'm going to do is search on this camera. So the first thing I need to do is right click and then select search. Now I'll be asked to log in. I can use my patent password, which I've got here. Alternatively, if you don't have a patent password set up, we can log in with a standard user as well, which I'll show you here. Keep in mind that the user you're logging in with must have playback rights to be able to do this. By default, the admin user does, but obviously you can change that. So I'm going to go OK. Now I'm presented with a playback window. Now from this playback window, uh, what you'll see at the top here is we've got from read write hard drive, which we want to leave this alone. Leave rec alone for recording, leave that alone. So the next thing we're going to do, want to do is select our date. Now I'm fairly certain it's today, so I'm going to click today's date. Obviously I could just choose another day if I wanted to, the 7th. You can see all of these highlighted fields here actually mean we have footage recorded on those days, so I could pick any one of those. So I'm going to pick today, and it was on that camera that I was looking at before, which just happens to be camera 4. So you'll see it'll take a little while to load, and then we'll have our green bar down the bottom here. Now, one other thing, you'll see this little M up here. This means mainstream. Um, most of the time you're going to want to leave that set to M for mainstream. So you can see here that we've got recordings from 8 a.m., which is pretty much when this recorder was turned on, until 5 p.m., which is the time that I'm currently recording now. Now, your recorder will very likely actually have uh, footage from midnight, which is a zero down here, until midnight. So this is midnight on or just the start of today. So this is, this is midnight on the Tuesday the 8th. And this is midnight the following midnight, which will be on Wednesday the 9th. This 24 down here. So keep in mind that yours could look a little different to this. You may also have motion enabled on yours. So you may have little yellow blocks and things like that. I'm going to show you a very basic setup. So this, in this case, we don't have much setup. It's, it's just a standard camera pointed at an object. Um, as I said, there's a lot of other things that you could do. We could do smart search, which we could have motion set up. This is none of that. This is just a really basic setup. So the first thing I want to actually do is just click somewhere in this time bar. So if I just click here, you can see that there's actually a few other obstructions in the way in this footage. But this is, this is me clicking through footage. So this is 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 a.m. You can see in this case, there's nothing on top of him here. So 1 p.m. 2 p.m., oh, it's moved a bit there, 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. Okay, so we've moved here. He's still not on top though, so I'm just going to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So 
If you look and see these little icons down the bottom here, we can use these to zoom in. So 24 hour view is the view that we're in right now. We have our two hour view, our one hour view and our 30 minute view. So this is going to center around where we've currently got the cursor set. So I'm going to click two. So you'll see that now I've got two hours from 16 until 18. So I'm going to click around in this view. I could zoom in a little bit more, but in this case, I don't think I really need to. So for now, I'm just going to leave it there. Now I'm going to click through here again. And I haven't found it yet. He's still there. And there you go. He's there. He's moved. So if I jump back again, he's there. And then he's been moved. So I'm going to zoom in here again a little bit further. So I'm going to go to a one hour view now. That just gives me a little more granularity. And I can click around a little bit further. There he is. So it's somewhere between those two. Again, I can zoom in and I've got more granularity here. And there's the event. It's been moved. Okay. So what we want to do is we, want to, we may want to put this out and hand it to the police, for instance, if it were an event. So we can do that. Um, we're going to clip it out. So we're going to mark where we want to start the footage, so the start of the event, and then we're going to mark the end of the footage, so the end of the event, and then we're going to attempt to save this to USB stick. So the start of the event, I think, will be somewhere around about here. Okay, so right there is where, where we want him. So I'm going to pause it there. Now, if I wanted to, I could step through frame by frame until the event actually happens just by clicking this over and over, left clicking. There you go, there's the start there. So I'll back up a few. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this and mark the start of the footage. Now, you'll see a little video clip icon down here. This video clip icon is what we want to click to set the start of the footage and the end of the footage. So the first thing I'm going to do is click it once, which is going to start it. You'll see that we've marked the time down here by clicking that, that marker. Now I'm going to play through until after the events happen now. So I'm playing through. Okay, so that's after the event. Now we've seen the whole event. That's all we really want to clip. So let's say I want to clip until now. Okay. So you'll see that my startup here was 1648.23 and my cursor is now set to 1648.41. So if I click the video clip again, you'll see that I now have 1648.23 through to 1648.41. Now, if for some reason I'd gotten this wrong, there's no problem, just click again. Find, find the place on the timeline and click the start clip again. It'll erase the first section and then you'll have to set the second section again. So it'll erase the start and then you'll have to set the um, end again. But it's no problem, just do it, won't be an issue. So looking back here, so now I found what I'm looking for, I can actually save that. So I'm going to click the save icon here. Now, because I have my USB stick already plugged in, it says device ready, everything is good. If I did not have my USB stick plugged in at this point, it would say that I did not have anywhere to back up and it would actually wait until I plugged one in. If for some reason there is something wrong with your USB stick or it's formatted in a strange um, file system format, you may also notice that you have zero free space um, out of X amount of total space. In that scenario, you want to format your USB stick in FAT32 or XFAT format, and then you will be able to see, you'll see free space and everything will work correctly. So now that I've got that clip here, See, I've got this little clip in here. So I've got channel four, type regular recording. I've got a start time, 08, 08, 17, and end time, 08, 08, 17, or 16, I say, it should say, 08, 08, 17, 16, 48, 41. And the size of the clip is 22,584 kilobytes, or roughly 22 megabytes. So now this down here is going to say the space required versus the space remaining on the disk. I can click back up 
and what it's going to do is save that to a USB stick. Now I do have a little combined video box over here. What this will do is stitch the video together into one DAV file, one individual file, rather than spitting it out in multiple clips, which can be useful if you've got motion detection enabled. So I'm gonna leave that off now since I've only got the one clip, but if we had gone through and selected multiple clips, um, that would be what we would do. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna click the backup button it's going to ask me where I want to save on this USB stick. Now I could create a new folder and say footage. And I could save it inside the new folder called footage if I wanted to. Keep in mind that it is already going to put it in a particular date folder. So NVR 2017.8.8. And now I've created a new folder within there, which is footage. If I wanted to go up a level, obviously I can use these two dots at the top here. But I'm going to go back in to the footage here. And I'm going to click start. And you'll see that we're backing up. So depending on the size of your footage, this might take quite a while. Obviously we're only backing up a very small amount of footage, only 22 megabytes. So um, it happened very quickly and you can see backups complete. Okay, so now I can right click and that's now saved to my USB stick. So that's all we really have to do to save to your USB stick. At this point, we can hand it over to the police, for instance. Um, it, it does actually back the files up in a DAV format, which is a proprietary format to VIP Vision. Uh, it does also include a, what we call smart player, which is also installed on the USB stick. So you can use the smart player on the USB stick to playback from any PC that DAV file. Um, if you want to, you can also convert from those DAV files to AVI files or ASF files, something that's uh, more easily viewable on multiple platforms. Um, one final thing though, that you may be interested in doing is you can actually play back these USB sticks from the recorder if you want to verify that you've got the right um, footage. So I'm going to switch back again now. Now, what I'm going to do is just right click once and now this has brought me back to our playback. So instead of selecting from read write hard disk, I'm now going to select from IO device. Now SDC is the name of my, my card and I'm going to select browse. My USB stick I should say. I'm going to select browse and I'm going to find the file that I just backed up. So you can see we've got smart player in here. That's the player that I said you would use on a PC. Um, however, this is the footage here, this DAV file. So I'm going to select that and go OK. And now you can see if I hit play, we're playing back the event that we saved to the USB stick. So that's a good way to verify that we've got everything that we're looking for um, and that it's backed up properly before you hand it over to um, law enforcement or whoever you need to hand it over to. So I'm just going to jump back to live now, just to right click, right click, and now we're back to live. So there you have it. In this video, we've backed up a clip to a USB stick, such as this one here. Um, and I've shown you how to play that back from the recorder as well. If you've got any other questions or any other comments you'd like to say regarding this video, please leave them below. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these videos or you have any, any other questions that you'd, you'd like us to cover and uh, follow in future videos. Um, but yeah, you, this has been Jeff and uh, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.